Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. I'm David, and I'm here with Maya and Jawad. Hi, everyone. Hi, Maya. Hi, Jawad. Hey. Hi, everyone. Nice to be so today you are on NFT Tuesday. Uh, basically, we're going to make a round trip about NFT during those next six weeks. Uh, can we share the screen, please? Voila. Really happy to see you all. Huh? We are more than 1,000 right now. I see, uh, I see the number. It's quite impressive. So the aim of NFT Tuesday and of, um, of this uh, series of webinar is to give you an extensive view of what the NFT trend is, uh, but not uh, as a view of people speaking and, uh, and ha 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 and speaking about tenancy, but more about a practical technological view with people that does NFT and show you how to do the same. So what we're going to do, and, uh, and really the aim of it is you can go on this presentation just by joining this link. Uh, it's really simple. And every Tuesday at the same hour, we're going to explain you stuff about NFT, the technology behind it. The program is here. So it's going to be a series of six webinars to discuss about all about NFT. Everything to, you need to know, the digital economy are around it, bullish or bearish investment, are we in a bubble, are we in a bubble yet, a beginner's guide on how to manipulate them, create them, etc. NFT for developer and what is the next level. You can join our community. We have a community dedicated to NFT right now on Binance NFT. Here is the link and as I tell you, this presentation is available for everyone. Maya, do you have anything to add to this? I just wanted the community, to, I wanted to encourage community to join the Telegram group that we have specifically created, created for the NFTs. Um, and uh, yeah, let me quickly show it on the screen. And also, uh, can you please, David, go uh, full screen? Because it might be hard to read. Perfect. Um, let's go. Let's go on the on the next uh, on the next slide. Uh, so basically, um, what is the plan for today? And uh, I'm really happy, Jawad, to uh, to to have you here. Um, we're gonna we're gonna introduce you in uh, in two minutes. I just want to speak about this session. So basically, first presentation of Terra Virtua, your concept, how you work with NFT. We have made a big survey about all the Binance uh, user, and we have. A lot of questions about NFT. We're going to respond to the most common of them. Then we're going to show you a little bit our reading of the NFT landscape on all the blockchain environment. And then we're going to show you how to create your first NFT on BSC. It's a little bit the first prototype that you can do. And voila. So let's start. Uh, but let's start with one thing: NFT contest. We've created the first contest for you uh, for this week. Uh, basically, we are gonna uh, we are gonna give you the opportunity to create your first NFT with Bakery, and then to get Bakery if uh, if the NFT is really creative. So do not hesitate to participate to it. Uh, the contest is free, and uh, you can participate until the next NFT Tuesday, where we are gonna showcase the, the winner. Here it is. So without waiting, Jawad, could you please introduce us? To okay, us? sure. Okay. So, my name is uh, Joanne Ashraf. I'm the co-founder of a company called Terra Virtua. We're listed on Binance um, and our ticker is TVK. Um, essentially, we're one of the guys, we're one of the key co companies in the NFT space right now. So, we are looking to make NFTs much more engaging and our focus is the mass market audience because the key thing that we want to try to make everyone understand here that nfts are here to stay and nfts are a way for you to have a digital asset that will last forever so what we've been working with terra virtua is to basically find a way to bring nfts based upon really interesting ip of high quality and bring them to the mass market so we've been building a team and a studio to get these out and we've signed up major studios like paramount and legendary from brands like The Godfather to the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie to areas like sports, music, there's so much more coming onto our platform. And 
fundamentally, one of our main missions here is to bring high quality NFTs to the masses and also find a way to bring in mainstream artists and crypto artists into a marketplace where they can sell and make recurring revenues from their creations. Because right now, artists, a lot of the time in this digital age aren't being rewarded. They just become part of like a Spotify um, army or they become part of a marketplace where you pay one subscription and you suck as much as you want, but the creators often don't get paid for their work, not to the level that they need to or the time and effort they put into it. And that's something that NFT can change. And that's what we're trying to do in Terra Virtual. Okay, thank you. And recently, so I saw you were working on um, on, uh, on different IP. Uh, so uh, basically, what the most successful so Pacific Rim, and uh, and this is really cool. <laughs> that you yeah. Did yeah. And Big uh, the second one, it was Godzilla versus Kong, right? Yeah, and this was actually the first dual branded mainstream NFT launch in the world. So we had the studios promoting an NFT company simultaneously while launching it to the masses. And that's a big step forward. I mean, Paramount have already tweeted this about us directly on, the, on, on their pages, but this was dual marketing. And it's not easy, you know, studio approvals. It's much easier just making <laughs> something, but going through with studios, it's very, very complicated. No, bravo for your breakthrough, and uh, this is this is really a, a promising uh, example of what uh, is going to go uh, more forward. Um, let's go directly on the question of the community. Uh, we have an extra pack uh, schedule, and uh, and I want to be uh, to be really precise. You're going to all, uh, you're, I'm going to all feel sorry for my French accent. I'm sorry, guys, uh, for it. Um, do you have like anything you want to like? point out uh, Jawad before uh, going yeah. to the most common yeah, question. Sure, yeah. I saw that you gave us some uh, NFT inspiring artist story. What the fuck yeah. is NFT, etc. All those elements uh, we have inside the presentation, but do you want to sum it up in one or two sentences? Yeah, look, um, basically NFTs have started off in a very most basic form as something which you can get physically with a digital replication. That's really what it is. People view it as the same thing they say why do i want an nft because i have a painting on my wall why would i want it on my computer but the main thing here is and that's what you're going to start to see that digital item is going to do more than the physical item does because why otherwise why why have it digitally if you've got it digitally yes you have better distribution more people can see it there are more ways to share it but we're going to see some real innovation in this space and this there's a link here that you can click and Amrita is a good example in that she was someone who was a painter in Dubai. She was doing things for the shake on the wall of his palace, and has, you know, her, her paintings. And um, she did lots of commissions. And now she is making beautiful animated NFT pieces, one of one pieces. And they're selling and she's making revenues and reaching a global audience. Before she was here in Dubai and now she's got people in Korea and Iceland buying her paintings. So NFTs are going to reach the masses, but also we're going to see some really interesting new types of NFTs yeah. as they progress. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to do a, a, a break, uh, a break landscape of what we uh, we saw inside the NFT space uh, with Maya uh, together. Uh, before, before, so basically. We've made a survey of more than thousands of uh, answers with the community about NFT, what they represent to, the, to us, etc. Uh, we wanted to give you a more response to the most generic questions that we have. We're going to take a real um, uh, no bullshit uh, approach right now. Here, basically, what we're going to do is that we have one question, three sentences each, no more. There's going to be one only exception for Jawad on one question that is important and that he did uh, uh, massively. But except that, it's going to be really round, round table and fireside question. Um, let's go on. How would you explain what is an NFT in one sentence? Uh, who wants to begin first? Okay. Okay. Um, Jawad. Okay, one sentence. Okay. An NFT is a digital item which is permanent ah. and you can give to your <laughs> <love that word. laughs> Jawad, do you hear us? Yeah, can, no, I, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, um, all right. How would you explain what an 
an NFT in one sentence if you had like and an NFT is a permanent digital item you can give to your grandchildren. There you go. Oh, that's a good explanation. <laughs> For me, if I had only one sentence, I would say that it's the first digital object that you cannot copy and paste. Right. Then for me, it's um, the most innovative way to protect your intellectual property. That's fun also. So that's, you know, three different aspects on NFT. We are not going to make you a description of what is an NFT by the book, etc. Because I think you all know what is an NFT. I think you all already uh, already uh, went on this. So I will avoid that to, uh, to happen. Uh, and uh, I don't want to lose someone on the fungible uh, world. So let's skip that and go on more bas basic question. Um, next question, what is the value of, uh, of NFT? Um, I'm, the most, uh, I'm the guy who know the less on that. So I'm going to begin for me. The value of NFT is such as the value of a digital asset. It's really um about his unicity is uh is uh is is um, is, um, is a value is uh, is more about the artistic point of view or unicity and the offer and demand voila for me okay i would say the value of an nft is basically the same pro the same value you would attach to a physical item if you're a fan yeah it's 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 beauty is in the eye of the beholder and a, and a price of any item is what is it worth to you yourself i mean i'm just explaining my one sentence <laughs> exactly no. that's a really interesting exercise because right now we are not like doing you know those playful like a uh, long uh, five minutes where we don't know even the beginning of the sentence that we had at first uh, maya what would you had uh, in terms of value of an mm -hmm. nft for you before I answer your question, David, can you please go full 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 screen with the presentation? You need to click on present. Yeah, let me uh, let me go full screen. Because we have a few comments uh, in the uh, chat. Yes. And some people go. don't see. Can you please? Oh, here it is. <laughs> you see you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry so about that. Yeah, let me uh, just go to that. Voilà. So that's no, amazing. See. That's much better now. Uh, well, for me, I would say I would also encourage the community to answer those questions because we really value feedback and we want to know what you actually think about uh, NFTs. Um, so for me, I think the biggest value of NFT since, for example, crypto and Bitcoin is backed up by uh, people's trust, then NFT is something that is backed up by artist recognition. So, yeah. It's totally different if I create an NFT or a famous artist would do that. Yeah. So people yeah, if, you are, if, you are, if you are Picasso and you create an NFT, maybe it's not going to have the value of uh, me or, or you or, or Jawad is different. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's like that. Um, next question. Uh, NFT and IP right. We're going to take five minutes on that. And Jawad, I okay. want to uh, give us a little yeah. bit insight on that. Yeah. So what are the good practice? Uh, just to give you more, but basically a lot of people have the question of, can we put any element inside an NFT? How can we uh, prevent someone to take something that belongs to us and make it an NFT, etc., etc. So what is your uh, point of view? You know better than yeah, us. This is, this is the Terraverger soapbox. So um, essentially, IPs. Now, what um, if anyone does anything in the physical world, the rules for an NFT are basically bringing the physical world rules to a digital item. Before, like you said, you can just co copy and paste, but because you can copy and paste it, there's no inherent value to it. So if I buy a painting and it's a single piece, a one of one, then in the physical world, it has value. Now, if we make it in the digital world, it only has value if it's an original piece. So it's not enough that it's just an NFT and it's unique. It's got to have that uniqueness because it's been produced by an artist or a studio or somebody who actually was the creator of this. And that's sometimes people, because they've come from digital, they forget the fact that cutting and pasting stuff that doesn't belong to them 
isn't the way you can actually shouldn't be what you're doing because it's like saying that if i buy this phone i don't have the right to then go ahead and manufacture more of them i don't have the right to it i can own it but i can't use it to make something else and so what's happening with nfts at the moment and that's what we're doing in terra virtual we're working with ip holders to license the ip work out the best things to create original things to create and create them for the audience but then that's also the same rule for an artist if you've got a great artist and they make a piece of work you protect their rights in the same way now because it's very easy nfts are very easy to create people sometimes are getting confused and thinking they've got the rights to take stuff that they don't own make pieces based upon ip they haven't created and essentially sell those pieces themselves. Now, right now they can, but one analog that we discussed in the past is you had Napster before you had Spotify and iTunes and everything else, and it was a great music platform, but all the music was pirated, and when the brands woke up, everyone got sued. And you know what? This People who are buying items which are derivatives of um, non-IP, literally they are putting themselves a little bit in the crosshair, so they've got to be very careful about what they buy and what they create. And you know what, it's there to protect everyone from the little guy to the big guy. And this is one of the things that we have to be very mindful of. And right now people aren't, but people will, people will learn, but we have to be advocates and say, look, um, if somebody spent time and effort creating something for themselves, let's say an artist has created a beautiful piece of artwork and they put a lot of themselves into it. If somebody just copies it and uses it, it's not fair. And NFTs provide the ability to make this asset real and make that asset um, have value and have re resale value. So a royalty is provided to the creator further down the line, which is what can't happen right now in the physical world. Only the agents get to make the money, not the artist. So that's the good practices are don't use IP that, that you don't own. If you do use IP, get permission for it. And also one of the main things that we have got to be very aware of as NFT owners is not to, to be mindful of the fact that when, some, when you're buying something, even if it's an NFT, unless it's from an approved source, it may be a copy of somebody else's work. Because right now they look the same, they look the same, they're on the blockchain, but if there's no verification behind it that it's an artist, what's stopping you from buying something or somebody who's posing in the, as an artist because the blockchain is allowing anonymity. So even when you, so, you know, just like the, the whole point of the blockchain is, is speed and trustless transactions. But in this case, the anonymity, the anonymity goes the other way. You need to know who you're buying from. So those are things to look, respect the IP and also be careful where you buy from, because sometimes if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's not the duck that you think you bought. So you've got to be careful about it. So that's a little monologue. I hope two I can to, uh, Yeah, two things to add uh, about that. So I'm, I'm looking at all the comments uh, inside the chat. Uh, everyone, please, if you like this webinar, do not hesitate to put a thumbs up inside the video. It's really helpful. Everyone is going to know more about NFT, BTC. BTC price is going to go up. Make a jest for you, make a jest for us. <laughs> and still on yeah, yeah, you see, I work this one. And uh, and secondly, uh, everyone find your, your office really, really cool, Jawad. What are oh, in thank the you very much. Yeah. What is the background of it? Like, you have an Iron Man, I see, like... Yeah, a... no, I've, got, I've got an yeah. Iron Man, I've got a Thanos, I've got a, a Predator head, uh, a Rosat from Watchmen. I mean, all of the Terra Virtual team are huge geeks. We are basically selling what we want, what we like. So we have Pacific Rim, but the robot was on my wall before we licensed it. Uh, <laughs> I'm personally a fan of the of the soundtrack, and so no, oh, we I, I, understand you, I understand you a lot. Uh, last things, last last things before going to the last question. I see a lot of people that say hi from Iceland, uh, Colombia, all all the places in the world. Thank you all. To, to come uh, to come to this webinar, uh, really, uh, thank you. Uh, let next question. So on the IP rights, thank you, Jawad, to have give us a, given us a, a resume of that. Um, it's really precise. Uh, be aware about either the material you using, either the source it come from when you buy a, an NFT. It's important. 
And the next boiling question, NFT and environment. Maya, I let you begin with that. What's your opinion on that in two, three sentences? Good well, or bad? I honestly believe it might be too early to blame NFT. It's NFTs for killing the planet. It's still a very little portion of those trans transactions. Um, yeah, so I'm being positive about it so far. Yeah. What do you think? Um, average. Basically, we know that uh, blockchain is not um, the best, uh, the best greener energy. Even if it uses green energy in most of the case, it is a great uh, getaway for renewable energy, better than a storage uh, on battery. Um, after that, we know that NFT it has to evolve. The technology has to evolve. Uh, it's a, it's a really uh, early technology. So when it ramp up, we're going to hope the technology will ramp up as well. And that's why proof of stake is really important. So on Binance Smart Chain, it's a proof of stake. Let's say it's less worse than better and, and best. But I would just like give like one story about that. It's about, you know, existing hard, existing uh, non-fungible object, existing uh, art piece or unique object. Um, for example, you know, when we had to move uh, Guernica, the painting of Picasso, uh, we used a beluga. A beluga is a big airplane with a, with a roof that, uh, that can uh, lift up and open in order to put it. So basically, you know, art piece, and uh, and uh, and even unique object right now consume a lot of energy to be transported, to be certified, to be uh, checked, and so we need and we need to have like a real comparison of the energy to be able to judge. Uh, Jawad, do you want to add anything about that? Yeah, I mean this is just building on what you said. Just imagine that if you go ahead and you buy a, a doll. It's, it's, it's created, it's manufactured under heat, it goes to a production facility. Then after that, the boxing is done, then it's packaged and then air shipped to a location, after which is then put in an Amazon box, which is this big for a doll this big and then shipped to your door. Think about the amount of energy that's required to make that little doll get from the first, from the, from the keyboard to your desk. It's a lot more than sending a digital item. I mean, yes, digital items use energy, but just imagine how much energy it just takes to melt down a mold to make a doll. It's, it's, people will pick up on certain things and say, this is bad, but actually it's fractional compared to it. Right now, you know, there's so much cost in distribution and creation of any item, which is physical. Digital, the main point is, is global distribution in instant. And it, yes, it uses power, but it's power that, in theory, you'd be using pretty much any way to facilitate the blockchains. That's a point, and that's interesting. Um, let's keep about, I think it's the last question. I'm not sure. We're going to do a question and answer with you guys uh, at the end. Don't you worry. Uh, so do not hesitate to put uh, your question on the chat. Do not hesitate to put any thumbs up inside the video, please, guys. <laughs> so last question, where are NFTs stored? Because it's decentralized, it's a decentralized technology. So where is it? Inside my wallet, where is the media, etc. cetera? Uh, who wants to begin? We're gonna, yeah. So, um, so basically, this is a new technology. So, right now, with a lot of companies, the NFTs are stored on blockchain databases like IPFS. But right now, a lot isn't. So, even though you mint the NFT on the blockchain, the data is sitting on people's databases. They're sitting on their servers, and also, it's sort of a necessity right now as the technology gets more mature. And a lot of people are working on elements of this because even if you have, let's say, a 3D model and you've got it all on the, the blockchain and it's in a database, you can't view it. It's just like a pile of data and meshes and rigging. You need a way to view it as well. So right now, NFTs are stored in databases, but even that's not enough. Even if they're stored on the blockchain, you need viewers to view those items in an open source manner. And this is all coming right now. So I kept it short, but I could talk about that for another 30 minutes. <laughs> Perfect. Um, to complete on that, uh, it's, it's interesting what you say, Jawad, about the database, etc. 
Um, there is a media that we use. There is uh, the blockchain information about the NFT that's cut the world in two. Um, blockchain is blockchain, meaning that uh, the elements that you have, the belongings, the, where it is inside the wallet, it's going to be on the blockchain of the protocols that you use. Uh, could be Ethereum, could be a BSC, could be another one. Uh, there is a uh, multiple uh, protocol, and we are here to speak agnostically. Um, um, the, the, the second stuff is the media or the, the system of operation, uh, etc. And this is interesting because there is two parts. Basically, uh, and uh, we spoke about this, Jawad, uh, before the meeting, uh, there is first the media on itself, 3D model, uh, image, video, uh, music, could be uh, an NFT about music. All those media could be stored inside a database, but you need someone to read it as well. And so let's say that, you know, NFT is really at its first step right now uh, because, uh, because as we see, uh, we're going to need to have a universal reader on one hand, uh, uh, another uh, a, a, a storage that never goes off on the other hand to uh, keep the media alive. And that's IPFS. This is decentralized database of, uh, of contents, but compatible with everything. And so all this element of NFT ecosystem will need uh, to be done. I'm sorry, all the guys, for my French accent. <laughs> I'm going to try to make it very English and very uh, without any accent. And the more I try, the more I have this French accent. So sorry, guys. Uh, so here are in for the question. Maya, do you want to add anything about where our NFT stored or any, any element? Yes, of course. Um, well, the easiest way, let's move a little bit away from the technology, but the easiest way to store your NFTs, uh, for me at least, is uh, the Trust Wallet. When you have the, you can have, store your crypto collect collectibles and uh, check the UX, it's very easy. So even a newbie can easily um, store the NFTs that you purchase on other marketplaces. Yeah. 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 Well, well, it's totally true. Totally. We spoke about the limitations, but actually the practicalities, yes, you store it on your wallet. That's it. It's there. So, yeah. Mm. Totally. Let's go to the next phase of, uh, of the presentation. Um, here it is. So basically, we wanted to give you a landscape of what we find inside NFT uh, to show you some example of it, to speak about the next generation of NFT as, uh, as, uh, as what we see. Um, so basically, if we take, for example, the art NFT market, uh, we're going to separate it in three. Oh, for art, I can use my French accent <laughs> with decency. <laughs> and so there is uh, the existing physical object uh, that already uh, exists. Here you see a representation of a soulage, uh, Pierre Soulage. And so basically, uh, what, what, what has been done on this NFT is just to take the media of this painting to then reproduce it as an NFT and to then sell it. It's a little bit the equivalent of a poster, of uh, a picture that, uh, that you reproduce, etc. The value is different. Um, on the digital creation and on the digital media, um, there is, we, we will see another step, which are like elements that has been done inside the digital world. With Jawad, we spoke about it. It could be a 3D model. Uh, for example, on, a, on, a, on your side, Jawad, a 3D model of a Godzilla. Uh, a 3D model about a Jaeger or anything from Pacific Rim. Something that has not been designed to be done in the real world, meaning it's really a digital media and we're going to add him a feature of unicity, of uh, contability, of traceability, thanks to the blockchain technology. Why do I separate these two objects? Because features and aim are going to be different for both of them. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is the way it is. And for us, and a little bit like when we analyzing how innovation flows, we're going to speak about the next generation, which is a generation where artists understand blockchain technology, use it as their own advantage inside the artistic process of creation. So it could be an NFT that after the 100th transfer, the NFT is burned, or it changed forms, or it changed, etc. Or maybe each transfer, or when it changed ends, 
it could change color or it could be it could lose some information gain some information etc etc all based on a smart contract that could be created only for that because at the end of the day we're creating art piece guys do you have any other element to speak about art nft do you want to add anything maya jawad i let you uh, more uh, more depths adding more depths to, uh, to what i say well basically i mean even our nfts are quite new and it, this is where most of the nft market is now but it's only one category you're going to see a lot of new categories appearing for nfts they, you know, art is easy because it's easy to understand. People can actually understand the key things, which are authentic, authenticity, limited, a limited quantity, and uniqueness. But we're going to see, we're going to see NFTs covering every other digital category. You know, from music to sports to film to 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 games. You're going to see it everywhere. This is the current landscape, but right now the landscape is just heating up. Totally. Maya. Go on, David. We covered basically everything. Do you have anything to add? Let's continue. Okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, if we go more on the uh, on the NFT mainstream, on um, on, uh, on on gaming, collectible, etc., uh, we're going to speak about uh, about uh, some projects. So uh, we spoke about the big IP with uh, Pacific Rim and uh, and um, and uh, ah, ah, and uh, Godzilla versus King Kong. Sorry, Jawad. <laughs> And, uh, That's and big IP. there is also other collectible and big IP that we know. Uh, there is a Top Shot, famous, uh, works well. Sorar uh, in uh, in uh, Europa, uh, which uh, which uh, use a gaming uh, gaming token of, of football card. Uh, we all know uh, those uh, collectible uh, trading card game. We've all collected them uh, when we were young uh, from all over the world. So I think this object speaks to your mind when you were a kid etc this is the enhanced version of the collectible that uh, you were trading when you were a kid um, with different features with additional uh, elements if we move on there is also my personal favorite because i was a big fan of magic uh, the gathering um, the trading card game uh, that you're gonna have so we differentiate that because that's objects that have particular gaming software that you couldn't really use without the software. Again, on this, the question of universality of, uh, of the software and the total compatibility of it uh, during the time will, uh, will, uh, will, uh, will, will be a real question. What happened if people, uh, if people uh, are just, uh, if the project is abandoned, what is going to be the value of the card if the software is not running anymore and you cannot play the game uh, anymore? Uh, this is the question because the NFT will uh, will uh, will disappear, or will not disappear, but the game could. And so, what to do? And there is the last uh, the last element, the blockchain game. Uh, so uh, we saw some operation in uh, inside Binance. First, Axie. Uh, secondly, and more recently, a launch pool about uh, Alice, a game that is going to be on stream. Um, inside those games, you can buy, sell, use item, and use part of, of it that is going to be recorded inside the blockchain, and uh, and you're going to be able to use. So we separate uh, those two worlds of trading card game and blockchain game. Why? Because in trading card, really, it's an object that is really, you know what you can buy, you know what you can buy. You cannot buy the board, but you can buy the card. Uh, in blockchain game, really, you can buy any object inside of it, anything that it composes, and play for and be uh, play for with it. There is like some uh, mechanism to get reward inside of it. Uh, voilà for the gaming uh, element. Do anyone has anything to add? Uh, I'm 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 really going into the collective intelligence. Jawad, uh, Maya, do you want to add anything to that? I just think you're going to see lots of new interesting games coming out, which are going to be using a lot of different mechanics. I mean, right now, DeFi was first, and then now you've got NFTs, and now you're going to start seeing a combination of these mechanics going on. I mean, if you look at that, like the Avagotis of this world and some new games that are also coming down the road, there's going to be new game playing experiences, but ones that make you money as well. There's going to be a lot of interesting things. Oh, OK, the next slide. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> as you say, now uh, this is a little bit, you know, the, the I think it's really the sooner landscape, and uh, and uh, and sorry for that. Uh, but uh, basically, uh, DeFi NFT, uh, DeFi NFT, they combine finance and uh, DeFi uh, DeFi methodology and gaming methodology. Um, I'm gonna let you discover uh, those two ones that are on BSC. So either Bakery that's done the combo and they go uh, finance. So I let you speak more about it. About DeFi NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, as you, um, every look, everyone who's in the blockchain ecosystem is fundamentally an investor. I mean, most people in here are investing, they're looking to wait, uh, yield farming, ways to mine NFTs, earn NFTs, um, mine tokens, earn tokens. I mean, these are really something that everyone wants to do. And like, for example, like in Terra Virtual, we, we're going to have staking programs. But in our staking programs, we're focusing on earning NFTs and rewards as opposed to just earning tokens. Because people actually want, if you can just mine something and it can generate just a token, you might as well buy the token. If you can mine an NFT which is unique and you can only earn by mining, all of a sudden you have something rare that you can't buy. And so people are now looking to try to get these NFTs. They're looking and they're creating lots of novel new ways to do it. I mean, there are many new projects coming out which are trying to create little variations of this as well. So, and, and, and here at Terra Virtual, I mean, five, we have five projects, like Binance, I'm sure is 50, but we at least have five or 10 who come to us and want to have got novel new ways to try to mine or earn or yield farm from NFTs. And NFTs, one thing to mention is, is they're not just cards or games. These could be ownership to like Twitter type accounts. These could be rights to certain things that are in the physical world. They could be tokenized abstractions of other things that you can buy or earn with a right to something. People are making NFTs on diamonds where you can get NFTs on raw diamonds and you buy a right to them. And as they polish, they go up in price and people's valuation of the NFT goes up. So there's going to be all sorts of applications for this, not just games, but people are applying lots of like things to physical world use cases. Maya, do you want to add anything? Yeah, actually, um, I was about to add, uh, since NFT has a very good use case for the startups, so they can avoid all these expenses on uh, protecting their intellectual property. So we might see more coming from that space. And uh, yeah, I think this is really a use case and it might actually be pushing the, uh, the NFT industry if we can already call it as a separate industry will we be able to call it a separate industry yeah, so. definitely yeah for me it's uh, it's really um, a use case uh, uh, inside uh, inside the blockchain technology and inside the industry but it opened a lot of use case and uh, it has made a, a strong push uh, to, uh, to all this environment um, we see an adoption of celebrities artists People that never go inside blockchain without this kind of freedom. It's, it's like you said, like if somebody is, people have been buying skins in Fortnite in games for the last 10 years. They are spending millions and millions of dollars on digital assets that disappear when, they, when the company disappears or the game stops. People have been making in-app purchases for longer than that. Everyone's doing it already. They just don't get to keep it. So this is what NFTs provide. It provides permanence for the digital asset. And if it's permanent, all of the attributes of a physical asset become part of the digital asset. It's not an industry. It's going to be part of life. That's how we view it. Over I mean, it's digital is real, you know, like, and, and physical is real. And they're both of intrinsic value. You can leverage them, lend them, rent them, do whatever you want with them. And this is, this is what NFTs are going to enable. It's... It's it's a game changer. Yeah. Um, last point about that, just to um, just to finish about it, um, for you and uh, and uh, what is going to be, you know, the next evolution of the NFT, the next uh, innovation inside the NFT. So every day we hear some new uh, news about that. Um, I wanted to have your opinion about this. Like, what? 
what is the next big things inside NFT uh, for you both? Maya, I, I keep talking first, so after you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> 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 well, obviously, it's a great trend to observe and to follow on that. I wouldn't make, um, I wouldn't make conclusions yet because, you know, like in crypto industry every year, we have a big thing happening. Um, but I think we might, exactly as you said, digital is now the new real. So I think with time, there will be less, um, if I say it correctly, um, so the difference between the actual one, the NFT that is, that is backed up by the material thing and something that is like super digital, totally digital, the differences will be getting like the lost. That's what I think might happen. But it's definitely a trend to observe. Okay. Well, this is something that we talk a lot about internally in our team. I mean... Gary and I and the rest of the team are talking about this all the time. And what I would say to start with, look at every other category which exists, which isn't currently in NFTs. Right now we're seeing art. But think about art, think about music, think about movies, think about all types of media, and also think about um, publishing. You know, all of these things right now aren't in NFTs. And just imagine, let me just give you an example. Imagine if you had an NFT, which was a music track, but that music track was broken into layers so you could slice away layers of the music to hear different parts of it. You can take away the acoustics and then you could hear the music. Think about what you can achieve in digital when you've got full control over the asset that you can't do right now. Right now you can click a button and stream it. But if it's your own item, just think about you had a record and you played the vinyl, but imagine you can play with it, tweak it, remix it, do things. I think you're going to see lots of really interesting things. I think those assets are going to become collectible again as NFTs. And then I think there'll be ways to manipulate them and play with them and get insight into them that you can't at the moment. And that's what's going to differentiate them. That's why an NFT is just not going to be a copy. If I've got a piece of music and I can listen to it in four different ways, you know, without the, without the drums, with just acoustics and all of this, and you can slice it away layer by layer. Imagine how interesting that would be. And there's all sorts of things like that that we think are going to happen. And we're, gonna, we're working towards doing a lot of this interesting stuff because it's going to change a lot of things. It's going to be fun for everyone. And that's what these things are meant to be. It's fun. It's sharing. It's, it's doing things with friends. And it's about enjoying what you have. Not just clicking a button and streaming it and just having low quality, low grade, you know, kids sack. If I, if I look at when I was young, you know, um, um, you, you were trying to find the best cord, the best cable for the best sound. And my girls are wandering around with this like very low grade MP3 equivalent they're playing. It's just not the same thing. And the NFTs are going to bring that back. You'll be able to make digital what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um Last um, um, last point, my impression is really about the type of media that we're going to have and the functionality. Uh, I'm waiting the creator and the artist to surprise us with a, with those property, meaning that for us, an NFT is this. And, you know, when an artist and when a, a creator will put his vision, his creativity on top of uh, those technical uh, elements, he will create surprise for us. He will question the existence of the NFT, the fact of blockchain, etc. thanks to it. So for me, I'm really uh, waiting, you know, the, the step up where all artists or artists that create NFT have a total understanding of what they create, how they create it. And that's also the aim also of this event month is to train a little bit a next generation of artists and of our creative mind to use those NFT and to make it their tool to then make their creation their own. So voila, uh, voila is a very fresh word. Um, next step will be more about how to use uh, the platform and how do you want to begin on the NFT competition? So basically, we have a competition. Uh, you're going to find all the details inside the description of this video. Uh, you can create any first NFT that you want. It's going to cost you only $5 uh, of fee. We're going to show you how to create one. The first step of all those things, if you don't have anything about blockchain, etc., will be to 
create a MetaMask account or, and to connecting you to the Binance Smart Chain. Why are we going to go to Binance Smart Chain? Maya, could you show me, uh, could you show me, uh, please? Because I'm going to need to explain something in real life. Yeah. Um, screen on me, please. And this is going to be fun. So basically, you know, you have like two ways to create um, to create NFT. In fact, you have multiple protocol and multiple ways. Um, Ethereum has been one of the most favorite uh, standard of um, to create NFT. Why? Because it's been years that it exists. There is top of protocol insights. There is also a tutorial. But the problem with Ethereum is that you see here is an Ethereum wallet, and right now the situation is like that. Is that it's a fucking stair meeting. It costs a lot of fees to get that. I don't have any problem with the fire extinguisher. The fire alarm didn't work. Yeah, the fire alarm didn't work. But, uh, but it was okay. Um, so, yeah, it was. It, it's really uh, sometimes a pain uh, on Ethereum, even if it's a, a real good protocol. So what we wanted to do is to make example on Binance Smart Chain uh, in order for you to, to be able to create NFT, but without spending hundreds of euros. And after that, you choose your protocol. You can stay on Binance Smart Chain. You can go more on Ethereum. It's really up to you to choose. Can we go back on, sc on screen sharing, please? So I'm gonna get out of um, of the of the full screen uh, just to show you one uh, smaller uh, trick. Once you have set up MetaMask, you're gonna need to set up Binance Smart Chain uh, network. And so, in order to do it really simply, you can come to PancakeSwap, for example, and just by allowing BSC mainnet that you're gonna see here, you're gonna be able directly to be connected to Binance Smart Chain and to go. Um, there is multiple tutorial uh, on uh, on uh, how to do this. Sometimes you have to put the information yourself, but this is really the most simple and the most in five minutes uh, type of way in order to uh, to begin uh, inside of it. Then, uh, not coming next, but let's begin to create our first NFT together. So I'm going to go inside Bakery Swap. Bakery Swap is great to create NFT. It's a platform that has been Done for that. I'm sorry for the loading time. It's gonna it's gonna come off uh, really fast. And so inside of it, you have an NFT marketplace, and you're gonna be able to create NFT for really a small amount of uh, of money. And and we're gonna do one together right now. So here you you see uh, there is like the marketplace. You can uh, go browse it. There is multiple operation. But if you want to do an uh, an NFT yourself, your first NFT are uh, not maybe the best artistical realization of your of your of your life but the first prototype of what is an nft we're going to do it really simply uh, so here it's going to be really simple really fast you can choose multiple media it could be a picture it could be a gif it could be a video it could be an audio we're going to keep it simple we're going to take a picture uh, i'm going to put a, a network name uh, so let's say nft tuesday uh, zero one, uh, voilà. I'm gonna put uh, my name on it and uh, David uh, area zero zero two. If you know that there is not uh, any other one, no, nothing. Uh, just the NFT we are creating, voilà. And I'm gonna upload an artwork image. We've been very creative to incite you to be also uh, very creative. Uh, so I'm going to show you what the NFT. So yeah, it's CZ Rambo. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's CZ, but inside the head of Rambo. And now we're going to mint it. So you're going to see it's actually simple. Once the image is uploaded, we just have to click to mint. And normally, voila, I'm going to have a uh, MetaMask transaction. 0 0.011827 BNB approximately $5, $6 right now when I speak about the price of BNB being between $5.50, uh, around $5.50. So let's confirm. And then my NFT will be uh, created and I'm going to be able to see him uh, inside my gallery. So to see him inside, the, to see it inside the gallery, you just go there. There are some NFTs that are in the process of creation. And so they are on the pending one. 
And if you want, once they are created, once Bakery has checked that the IP is good, etc., you're going to be able to see them uh, totally. So voila. And uh, if I refresh, because this one, this was one one uh, that uh, that we train on it uh, to do it. But voila, if I go, uh, you see the one that I just created right now. You can vote for it if you want, <laughs> but uh, no need. But voila. Uh, Jawad, one question um, about this. How about IP right for that? Basically, you know, I took um, I took an image of um, of Rambo. Uh, I used uh, Deepfake and uh, and I put uh, the image of CZ. Is it something that is free of right, or is it something that I need uh, I need a Sylvester Stallone to be okay with me? Yeah, you know what? This is this one's a pretty great one. I mean, brands generally let you make fan art as long as it as long as you're not heavily monetizing it. They sort of turn a blind eye. Mm -hmm. And something like this is just a bit of fun. So yeah. I'm not sure. And in, in, in my opinion, this would be something that they would sort of just ignore. But mm -hmm. it is something that technically you shouldn't be doing. But even if you look at Star Trek, Star Wars, people have made fan movies and the studios have let them go. And if it's for a bit of fun, they tend not to be difficult about it. But technically, I don't think you should. But I don't think anyone would get in trouble. But I'm not aware of that. Hello, we are professional. Don't do this at home. <laughs> but uh, basically, and uh, but basically, as long as I don't distribute this NFT, as long as I don't do a marketing operation about it, I don't, as long as I don't I'm make it a okay. competition to win this NFT, even if I want, uh, there is no problem because I just made a creation between me and myself. If I do more things about that. There could be any problem, but I wanted to show you an example that was, you know, tricky enough in order to say, okay, even that we can ask question about it. Okay. So here it is for uh, for this token. Um, let's come back um, the three of us, and um, and I think you know for everyone, it's the time to ask question and uh, and and to uh, to speak together, right? Yeah, we have quite a lot of questions in the chat. Thank you very much for shooting them in the comments. Um, let's start maybe with this one. Uh, OK. Uh, are all the NFTs uh, listed on a Terra Virtua unique? That's the question for you, Java. Um, the, the, um, all the NFTs. They're all unique categories. Some are one of ones, and some of them have a limited number of mint runs. Um, so it could be one of fifteen, or one of twenty, or one of fifty. So th th they're all unique SKUs. But like generally, you find so if an artist publishes something, there might be one of one. So if we've got a little robots that are on our website, our VFlex, there'll be one which is platinum, which has got unique characteristics, and the other ones might have more of them. So. Yes, they're all unique, but all of them have got a set rarity, and the year the rarity defines how unique it is. Then the follow up. Let's respond to the question. I think, <laughs> Maya, do you want yeah. to add anything? Uh, let's let's go to another one um, because it's kind of following up on that. Um, how can guarantee how how to guarantee uh, copyright? What if anyone can create a copy of art? Well, it's the best example to do that is if you, if I've got a painting on my wall, anyone can put it in a photocopy, right? And put the copy up on the wall. It's not the original. So some, some people will be happy with a copy because it's a digital item at the end of the day, but it's because it's not linked to the blockchain record, it's a fake. You know, so if I buy an a buy yeah. a painting, one question that um, that comes to my mind when uh, when I'm on it as well, and sorry to um, to disturb you uh, on this and to interrupt you, uh, Jawad, but what app, enfin, it shows as well that there is something that is missing into the NFT art. It is something to validate uh, the fact that what you own is really what you own. That is is a validator art that is unique that has not been copied, etc. That is and this NFT is a the IP is okay, and secondly, it doesn't come from another NFT or another creation that has been created before. Yes, and that's where the provenance is very useful, so you can actually see what it's coming from. But also, I mean, this and 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 that's the thing. 
because if it, if there's a particular, let's say it's an IP, you have the root contract that it's connected to. So just like, you know, when you're looking at a website and you've got a little padlock in the corner, and that way you can check to see whether the website is fake or not, that's really what the blockchain provenance is. But we'll just find have to find a friendlier way to show it to the mass market. But that's what it is. It's proof of authenticity. Totally. Technically, it's not really complicated to do that. But no. right now, you have to be an expert blockchain to assume and to be able to say that this object is unique, it's not belong to another NFT, etc., etc. I mean, we made it quite easy on our platform. You can just click and it shows the history. And you can see the original owner and all the provenance quite easily. But everyone needs to start doing that because people don't want to look through a thousand different records. It's, you know, we want we want everyone on these platforms, so we want people to find an easy way to trace the history. That little padlock works really well. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have here? All right, um, two thousand people are watching us still. Okay, th there's one here. How how can you actually own copyright on a on a on a picture or a drawing? Well, if you're the creator. You own the copyright, but you do have the option to assign the copyright. And that's where Hashmaster is a really good example. That people who, and that's very, very, it's a very popular type of NFT. If, if, if people um, are watching, don't know it. It's, it almost has its own subculture about these unique masks that have been created. And they are unique in that they allow people who buy them to own the copyright. So you can put the hash mark on a T-shirt, on a mug, anything you want. So as a creator, you can own that, and then you can assign it. But you can't get something and take the copyright. It has to be assigned to you. So that was answering that one. OK. One element about copyright that is interesting to say is that it's really something that is national based, meaning that copyright in France are different than system of copyright in US are different than system in copyright in other countries. Yes, it's very different. It's a nightmare, I didn't swear. Uh, and uh, and uh, to, to, um, to give you just one story that is interesting about copyright, this one you're going to remember. Do you know what is the picture that has been the most used, commercialized, etc., everywhere inside the world? Maya, do you have any idea about that? That's new for me. Mm -hmm. so that's a picture of Che Guevara. You know the portrait of Che Guevara. Yeah. As, uh, you know that uh, you see black and white, etc. That is amazing. In fact, in the country it was taken, there was no IP and protection rights. So the guy that has made this picture win zero euro of this picture and never had any uh, IP right about that. So it's really something that changed from one country to another. Just wanted to mention that. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, you know, in Japan, there are warehouses of fan art, literally warehouses full of fan art. And there's a different copyright system there where people have to basically say, I own the right to publish this piece of work. It's it's complicated wherever you go. Okay. Uh, I, I just see a, a question that is interesting that I just want to answer. I, I just uh, saw about that. but. Um, it's more like, will there be a copyright law on the blockchain above all the institutional law? No. <laughs> no. If there is no like a law, of, uh, universal corporate law of an IP law above, it's not blockchain that's going to gather all the country together to... to yeah, just, just get try trade. to make mobile trademarks, see how difficult that is. It's not, it's not easy protecting your IP. If they don't get along, they don't get along, and blockchain will not be a solution for them to get along. It's going to be even more a problem than a solution. Yeah, but you know, somebody's going to come up with a blockchain solution for this. It, it's like people are innovating every day. You know, we're going to see a way to probably have trustless IP global copyright. We're disrupting everything. It's just, okay, guys, that's a new ICO idea. Go for it. Uh, let me see. What else do we have? There's one here, how can you make your art as collectible cards? Well, basically, anything that you make can be published in any format. So just like Dapper Labs have got collectible cards for Top Shots, there's nothing stopping any artist from making in any format. You know, like we have AR and VR, it's completely up to the artist. You can, you can make it in collectible cards, you can put it on a 3D item, you can put it on a hologram later on, but there's lots of ways to do it. Um, 
we do have very practical questions. I think we, we, we have quite a lot of newbies in the, obviously watching us. And um, actually people are asking where can they buy NFTs? www.terravirtue.io <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, look, um, there are um, there are lots of platforms out there and they cater for different things um, yeah. but um, if you just google um, NFTs and to, to buy them you, there are marketplaces there are 3D, there are IP marketplaces there are lots of places um, maybe four or five top sites so the ones I would say is like um, Top Shots um, Dapper Labs um, Rarible, Maker's Place OpenSea, um, open you know, guys, go everywhere, buy NFTs everywhere. This is a small market, so the more NFTs you buy, the better. We all, we're all cooperating with each other, and everyone tends to be friends in this market. We have no <laughs> rights. Honestly, yeah. um, just before this call, we were, um, we were talking with the CEO of Dapper Lab. You, you know, we're having conversations because at the end of the day, together, we're going to grow a market. Sitting in little pools, we're not going to survive. So for an industry to thrive, you need cooperation. So go to any of those sites, but go to Terra Virtue first if you want. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. It's also important to add that some of the marketplaces are running on Binance Smart Chain. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Bakery Swap, Treasureland, some right? Voilà, some are, some are not. Uh, Bakery is totally a platform on Binance Smart Chain. Uh, Rarible, OpenSea, uh, all those platforms are, are more on Ethereum for now. Uh, yeah, change, we're... but uh, both, enfin, all are, are good platform. I would say that for no, it's quite weird because you know there is not the secondary market is really dispersed. We don't see someone with a lion share. Not uh, not uh, not thinking about anything in particular, but voilà, there is there's going to be a rationalization sooner or later inside uh, inside this market. Yeah, uh, I know. when you see Ethereum two get its act together, you're going to yes. sort of see. You're going to see a lot of disruption, and I think Binance Smart Chain is going to be one of the players that's going to survive. But I do think there's going to be a lot of disruption when it finally really starts working properly. All of a sudden, a lot of layer two solutions are going to become redundant overnight. You so, voilà, you say the word of when it's going to finally uh, arrive. Yeah, and... finally. I mean, yeah. <laughs> my head of development was telling me two years ago, it's coming. I went, no, it's not. Yeah. It's 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 really needed for the ecosystem to have uh, Ethereum 2.0. Uh, it's not uh, something that uh, that we are against or for. It's really something that all the blockchain need uh, at yeah. some point in order to scale up. Uh, really, um, we are really uh, we, we really like the Ethereum protocol, and there's not a, a competition or something like that. Binance Smart Chain has as as its own road, and I think also it's it's going to survive Ethereum uh, 2.0. Uh, it's Right now, it's more than uh, surviving right now uh, compared to Ethereum uh, one, but um, it has like it, it's really uh, it's really needed that Ethereum advance in order to unlock uh, a new set of potential for uh, all the blockchain ecosystem. Uh, it's uh, totally uh, seen. Any other That's... question, guys? Yes, we do have quite many of them. Uh, wait. It might make sense for us to answer some of these questions offline and we can just have them available before the following week because there's yeah, so many yeah. here and it's useful for the community. So I'll yeah. volunteer to answer a few of these after this as well. <laughs> we, um, definitely, can... we definitely yeah. are going to go through the questions and Binance Angels team is already interacting in the chat. So obviously and for sure we will be answering your questions once the recording will be saved. Um, I really like the question from... Columbia. Wait, let me find it. Uh, so yeah, here it is. I have a question. Uh, do you think the only use of NFTs are in entertainment industry and digital artists, or it can work for construction or ar architecture industry? So are we going beyond art? I think there's lots happening beyond art even now. Um, People are finding unique, unique, unique use cases. Like we, I spoke about diamonds earlier. There's supply chain NFTs. There's NFTs for authentication of user of users. There's there's um, NFTs which are based around fractional ownerships and representation of physical items. There's it's it's way beyond entertainment. There's multiple applications that people work on every day. Yeah. 
I might be mistaken, but this week I guess someone sold the house. Yeah. The NFT. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's from uh, Germany, right? From NFT, yeah. Yeah, people are doing really interesting things here in Dubai. A lot of the blockchain community is winding up in Dubai at the moment. And um, so, they're, do, they're doing lots of interesting things there with blockchain. Where there is a unique object, there is a use case for NFT. After that, does all the unique object will be a good use case for NFT? This is a question that we can ask. Uh, for me, uh, the, the response is obviously no. There is a unique object that you don't want inside NFT or that you don't want applied inside NFT. But there is a, a, a really big and a, a vast uh, a field to play with. Absolutely. No, it, it's huge. Well, we're only at the beginning. We really are. There's so much. And it's not entertainment. This is a digital representation of a physical world object. And in a physical world, we have entertainment. We've got sports. We've got financial objects. We've got physical items. And all of these are going to have digital representations. And they're all going to be on NFTs. Yeah, we can also question the, the fact of what is an object, you know, and why do you buy an object? Sometimes you buy an object for a souvenir. But this souvenir could be a media, a video. It could be even, like, basically an object Sometimes it's a representation of something that could be better in digital way. So you see, we're going to begin to think more about this uh, that, that way. But for that, there is also something, and we need to speak about that. It's also the valuation of the digital object, right? No, digital doesn't have that much of a value for the, for the common uh, people. Um, it's going to come with that. Huh? We, we, we are not, uh, we are not uh, candid. And already in March, I think NFT made 600 million, right? The, the trade volume, and it's only in March. Yeah. So in April, we will see, we will see where it goes. If I remember, top shot, it was like 18 users in July, 1800,000 <laughs> right now. Yeah, the, the market exploded. But, but, but you know what the key thing is right now that the market's sort of overheating a bit and people are doing some good stuff for NFTs, but there's some real garbage out there. So we don't want people to be confused and end up buying the wrong thing and not like NFTs anymore. So it's 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 an interesting time for all of us. We, we need quality and we sort of need responsibility in people. And, uh, you know, companies shouldn't let people just launch anything because at a silly price where they know there's not going to be any value later. So, because if, when people are excited, they buy. Yeah. Do you see any other question, Maya, that, uh, that you find interesting and uh, that you want us, uh, that you want to respond? We do have many questions, uh, but I think we might get to the closing thoughts already. Mm -hmm. This webinar is only the first out of the series of six webinars. So we're going to be running every Tuesday. We're going to be running one event. And the next one, uh, the next one will be about, yeah, about innovation. Uh, David, maybe you can go to the slide where we have all the events listed. Yes. So coming next to uh, next weekend, we're going to speak about next Tuesday on transforming the digital economy. How? NFT are impacting on the digital economy. Maybe we're going to speak about DeFi token more precisely and more in depth with also some O2 and tutorial about how to use those DeFi NFT in one or two uh, category of, of usage. Maya, Jawad, thanks a lot to have been here and to have done the first uh, NFT uh, presentation. I think I'm going to create an NFT for both of you guys and send it to you just exclusively <laughs> as the other. That's good. Okay, thank you very much. It was, it was a pleasure being here. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Please give us your comments, your views about NFT, how you see NFT. We are going to be on the space of the comment of the video. And don't you worry, we're going to, we're going to be there during the next few days and during the next week. Uh, do not hesitate to share your view. We're going to respond to it. And I want really to thank everyone from all over the world to have been on this first session on NFT Tuesday. Maya, I leave you the hand. Please don't forget to uh, join the NFT competition. I really encourage the creative people to join it. Uh, try it, experiment, 
um, it's a great tool and don't be don't be afraid of that because the entire story of the crypto industry proves that the one who joins the first will gain the most so one don't question, be Maya, when did you enter inside uh, inside the blockchain ecosystem what was the first time you bought uh, btc uh I got paid in BTC. Whoa. <laughs> I was paid. Uh, yeah, it was quite a while, but you know, in this industry, we are all disappointed. Some people are regretting on not buying it when it was for $1 and others um, are regretting on, on selling it when it was 30,000. Uh, we arrived too late into this market and in fact we all arrived too soon as well <laughs> but it's a great time we are living in obviously and it's it's great to be involved in crypto these days if you really agree is. if you agree give this video a like no no it's a fantastic time it's it's a it's a time of change and we're right in the middle of it we're in the belly of the beast so good fun yeah everyone thank you so much and uh let's uh let's see you next tuesday for the for speaking more about DeFi nft bakery uh dego finance of uh, some more protocol on, on bsc uh, we're gonna go uh, more in detail about that and by the way we're gonna wait for the nft competitions this week bye bye see ya bye -bye.